Hi everyone, if you are online, please leave a hi so that I can know who all are online. Uh, I hope you can see the live session now. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Hi, uh, am I audible to you? Hi Karpagan, uh, welcome back. So, uh, welcome Vivek and Vivek Abarma and uh, Julie, so uh, just a small note today. I'll be most likely, so I may not be quick to respond to your chat today because of the settings. Uh, so Hi, is the connection active? Uh, welcome, Monica. So uh, we'll start off the session. Vivek will be managing the chat. So if you have any doubts, please leave it there. And uh, before we begin, let me make a quick note. Uh, we might require some knowledge in metric spaces to understand these, uh, uh, the session, but not this first session not much but in the subsequent sessions i would strongly recommend you to review the metric spaces uh, videos that were posted previously so uh, just a quick reminder this particular discussion will be on definition of open set open sets and we will be doing it in three sessions not that we'll be simply looking at the definition of open sets so but there's so much to talk about there's so much to observe that'll be our aim during this session to give you a session outline our ultimate aim is to define topology and understand the definition of topology before that we're going to have a quick discussion of open sets in r which will be the focus of this session generalization oh, no, we'll try to generalize it to metric spaces and from the we will observe some properties of open sets i'm sorry can you confirm if the slides are changing the for you are the slides changing in the video so uh let's uh, so once we are done with the properties we'll be using those properties to define topology and from those observations that we made we'll derive a new definition called, called topology which has metric spaces but please not one thing to begin with only thing that you needed when we started with the spaces is the definition of sets and functions. And here we are going to build on metric spaces. We are going to build on the idea of metric spaces that we derived from the definition of sets and functions alone. And observe something called open sets and some of its properties 
before we jump something called topology which is which has something to do with metric spaces we will talk about it in one of the sessions in future so with that small knot let me quickly bring your attention to this quote by aristotle so aristotle said to tales the primary question was not what do we know but how we know it the first person in the recorded history to have used dedic uh, deductive logic to think through logically and arrive at conclusions he was a mathematician philosopher astronomer and much more so tail said a tail uh, aristotle was who aristotle was sorry yeah. aristotle said about tales that he did not look at what do we know rather he looked at how do we know it so the focus of the session will be on that how did we come to know about open sets and it's not about just about definition of open sets how do we did we possibly derive the concept of topology so that's the focus of our sessions and before we begin let me make the purpose of the session let me define the purpose of the session so our focus will not be on learning new definitions we are not going to in the previous session we were looking at a definition and we were trying to understand the definition which is already defined to us that's a technique the technique that i followed in the previous session where i took a definition i tried to look at the words in it i tried to uh, frame some examples then i tried to frame some counter examples and uh, so that we understood what is the value of each word in the definition the what we were doing is we were trying to understand a given definition in depth in this session our focus will be on how did this def definition come come around how did we derive this definition how did we make this definition or in other words we'll be focusing on training ourselves to create mathematics now this is a fight between how to understand a definition and how to frame one i am sorry to say that it's not something which we train in your our usual classroom because of the time limitations but here we are here to learn so let's get on it let's see how to frame new definitions in mathematics we are not going to frame anything new we are going to frame a definition which is already there but in the process of framing something which is already there we will learn the process of creating mathematics but yeah definitely through this process you will master a few definitions like open balls open sets topology etc now uh, a small note unless specified when i say set of all real numbers or r i mean r with absolute value metric so keep that in mind unless i specify that this is set of all real numbers or uh, this is r with discrete metric or anything when i say r or set of all real numbers i mean the metric space r with absolute value metric or usual metric on r which we discussed about in the previous session now let's quickly start with the definition of open intervals this is something which is known to you this is a simple set which is a subset of r and it is defined so it's denoted by open bracket and close bracket and we write a comma b in between this a and b tells us what are the boundaries or limits of the members of the set it is given by set x such that x belongs to r a is less than x less than b so these are all numbers if you look at it this way uh on a real line you have a you have b sorry you have b and 
these are all the numbers between A and B. But interesting to note that we are using strictly less than, we are not using less than or equal to. Hence, these are the numbers between A and B, excluding A and excluding B. That uh, something like imagine a room with doors. The doors are not included, everything that is inside. Maybe that's why it is more like it was named open in the will. We don't know. So this is a interesting set where every number near A to the right of A are included. Every number near B to the left of B are included, but not A and B itself. Also not one more thing. Here, we said X belongs to R. We didn't say anything about A or B, except one thing, that A and B should be comparable to X, which is a real number. What do I mean by comparable to? We know that 3 is less than 6. That's known to us. And we know that minus 6 is less than 1. That's known to us. But uh, we were talking about smileys in the last class. Can you compare it with 3? Can you say this is less than 3 or greater than 3 or something? We can't do that, right? So. We are talking about numbers which are comparable to. We are talking about numbers. A and B can be anything which is comparable to X. So the smiley cannot be compare, compared with X. But we know another symbol which can be compared to X, which or, or a real number that is plus infinity and minus infinity. So these two are not real numbers these two are not real numbers and but they are comparable with real numbers hence these two symbols are allowed uh, just a quick poll is it audible for you and uh, are you able is the class is going uh, is the buffering smooth for you do you have any trouble listening to the session anyway i hope it's all right you are all able to follow the sessions so anyway uh Going back, now uh, let's look at some examples. We know that interval 0, 1 is an open interval because again the boundary points 0 and 1 are not included. All the numbers in between are included. Again, as I told you, we know we can notice that 3, 4 open interval is an open interval because boundaries are not included all the numbers in between the set is nothing but all the numbers between 3 and 4 for example 3.2 belongs to the set 3.000004 belongs to the set and so on but we know that 4.000000 no matter how many zeros you put one doesn't belong to 3.4 similarly if you notice this interval, you will know that we, both A and B are comparable to real numbers. Hence, this is again an open interval where this will be nothing but excluding phi, all the numbers greater than phi. So, uh, Manas, uh, is the buffering all right? Are you able to hear it properly? So, now, uh,
let's make some observations. Given any two numbers, you can give numerous open intervals. Given any numbers, two numbers, you can give numerous open intervals like this. Let's make an observation here. Let's take any open interval. And we know that every number in between this is there. So let's take any element of this set. Roughly, let's put a line here. And what we can observe is we can always find a smaller open interval which is contained in this bigger open interval. Let's call this bigger open interval A and smaller open interval B. So we can see that Uh, just confirming uh, is the audio and the slides in sync for those who are watching the session. If you can leave a response in the chat, it will be good. Is the audio and the slides in sync or is the audio reaching you earlier than the slides? Uh, I'm sorry, the, we are having trouble with the broadcasting because of the corona thing. So, uh, first of all, I'm streaming in a lower stream, but even then video upload in YouTube is not as smooth as we expected. So, if there are any issue, please make a note of it in the live chat so that I can uh, try fix the problem. So... Anyway, making a note of this, getting back to the topic. So here we have let's make a quick note. I'll switch to the whiteboard so that uh, maybe it's you'll be able to see what I am writing. So I hope it's visible to all of you. So let's consider a uh, open set on real line and we don't know where it is it's some um, in the open interval we have one boundary a and the other boundary b and let's take a point here is the sorry because of this corona issues we are unable to um, there is quite a lot of trouble streaming and even in YouTube we are having trouble with uh, videos and things is everything back to normal now is the streaming proper Is the streaming properly happening now? Are you able to see what's there on the screen? So, yes, so, uh, 
I hope it is in sync. No, it's not exactly in sync. I'm sorry. Uh, is the or, uh, uh, I just cleared the entire whiteboard. Are you able to see what is? Is it in sync? Okay, so let's continue. Now uh, I'm going to draw. Uh, I'm going to draw a real line, and I'm going to consider an open set here, A to B. Now, uh, if we take a point around here, it's pretty much clear that you can easily find an open interval which is smaller than the open interval a comma b which we considered and it's say c d which is contained in c comma d so what i'm claiming is no matter what the point we take we'll be able to find a smaller interval which is contained in the bigger interval we are considering now obvious question will be what happens if a and b if the point is near A. Now, if you zoom in, you know that there are uncountably many real numbers. Hence, if you zoom in, you can see that you can still find a smaller, very small open interval, which contains this point and is contained in the bigger open interval A, B. So, this is something interesting about And let's do it in another way. Let's do it in another way of consider another set. Many of you know the set, but I am not going to name it because I haven't defined it. Where the end point A is included and the other end is not included. Here what happens is just like, so this will be the set X such that x belongs to r and a is less than to x less than b now for this if you notice here and all take any point you want in the set no issues you can find a small drop in interval which is contained in the bigger interval we are considering but if you take the point a what happens is at the point A, which is included in this new interval we are considering, this is not an open interval because we are including the point A in it. You won't be able to find an open interval because to the right, no issues, it will lie inside, to the left, there will be a small portion, any interval which contains A, there will be a small portion which won't be contained inside the set we are considering. So at A, there won't be any open interval which is contained in the set we are considering. Hence, this seems to be a property which is exclusive to, this seems to be a property which is exclusive to this open intervals we are talking about. Something interesting, right? So, switching back to the slides, this is something interesting. Given any point inside an open interval, we are able to find a smaller interval containing that point, completely contained in that set. And in fact, this property is something exclusive to open interval. So we just saw that uh, we took a set open interval, including the set A, the boundary point, and we saw that this idea is not true for that set because at one point A, this fails the statement fails so this is something which is true for open intervals and it is true only for open intervals very interesting now let's extend our observations now so we're going to consider the set 
which is nothing but union of two open intervals. Now here it is open interval 2 3 union open interval 5 6. Now these are two open intervals. Let me ask you again is the uh, audio in sync with the video? Is the audio in sync with the video? If you respond in the chat, I can know whether there is any problems in the buffering. So here we are taking the set two open interval two comma three union open interval five comma six. Now we know that given any point, let's call this set say A. So given any point in this set, we know that say we take a point here, definitely this point is contained in one of the open intervals. And interestingly, we can see that since it's contained in open interval 2, 3, as we observed earlier, we can find a smaller interval which is contained in open interval 2, 3, hence it is contained in the set A we are considering. Even if the point is in the set 5 comma 6, open interval 5 comma 6, we know that since 5 comma 6 is an open interval, we can find a smaller interval which is contained in set open interval 5 comma 6 and since it's contained in open interval 5 comma 6, it will be contained in the set we are considering. So the sets we are considering here, even if you take uh, 0 comma 2 Union open interval 0, 2, union open interval 3, 6, union open interval 7, 8. Here, what happens is again they are union of open intervals. Hence, this property will stay true for it. So these sets, just like open intervals, seems to obey those properties just because they are union of open intervals. Hence there is something interesting about this set. There is something interesting about this union of open intervals. We should probably name that and that's our next step. We are going to name the open intervals, union of open intervals, the type of sets in R which are nothing but union of open intervals. And we are going to call it open sets. So what we are is open sets are union of open intervals. So let's define it that way. Subsets of R which are union of open intervals is called an open set. Now, now let me ask you a couple of puzzles. You should be ready to type in the answers. So if you're all set, let's move forward. First puzzle. Show that every open interval is an open set. How do you do it? Think about it. Take a minute. And I'll tell you when you can post your answers. Type in your answers and get ready with it. I'll tell you when you can post your answers. So get on it. We have to show that every open interval is an open set. Something is an open set when it's the union of open intervals. So think about it. Uh, in a minute I'll tell you when you can post your answers.
Hi, I believe it's back up online. So, uh, so Karpagam suggests that you can the given open interval can be union with itself. Hence, we can see that open interval. The given open interval sets so take an open interval a comma b. When I say open interval a comma b, it already goes without saying that a is less than b. Because otherwise, our results are going to be different. So open interval a comma b. is can be taken we can take a union with itself or we can take a comma b itself union of a single set which doesn't have any meaning but in that case what happens is we are left with the interval itself see that we have taken union of two open intervals hence its union hence this is a, an open interval is an open set trivial observation now, next puzzle is every open set an open interval? Is every open set an open interval? This is a very easy question, so you can leave your thoughts in the comments straight away. Now, if you're wondering why we are looking at such symbol properties, as I told you, our aim is not on mastering a trivial definition like open intervals. Our aim is in mastering something else. The skill of how this thought process evolves. How do you define something in mathematics? To observe how you can create new mathematical ideas out of ideas that you are already aware of. That's why we are training ourselves to observe symbol properties out of it. So that we can evolve that thought process in us. Now. Uh, you can leave your answers in the comment. You can leave your answers in the comments and I'll be waiting for it. Is every open set an open interval? You can either say it is or you can say it is not. If it's not, give an example of an open set which is not. Yes, Karpagam, that's true. So, union of two disjoint, that's a set operation. So, I'm going to take the liberty to use that idea. So, union of two disjoint open intervals will not be one open interval because there is one number between 1 and 4, which is at least one number between 1 and 4, which is not there in the set. For uh, 2.5 is not in the, the that's it. So this is an open set because it's union of two open intervals, but it is not one open interval. So with that trivial observation, let's make one more observation. Like open intervals, given any point inside open set, can we find an open interval contained contained in it? That is, we notice that. We notice that for an open interval, we notice that for an open interval, given any point inside that open interval, we'll be able to find the smaller open interval, which is contained in the bigger open interval. Like that, for an open set, will we be able to find, uh, given any point in an open set, will we be able to find an interval, smaller interval, which is contained entirely in that set. We have already made that observation. So we notice that it is true for whatever we observed for open intervals is true for open sets as well. 
So, for example, let's take an open set which uh, say k is equal to a comma b union c comma d, and let me draw it on number line like this. And we notice that given any point inside it, it's either a member of open interval a comma b or open interval c comma d. Hence, we can find a smaller interval which is contained in either one of these open intervals, which will be a subset of k again. So, turns out this is true for open sets as well. Now, using this concept of given any point inside an open set, we will be able to find an open interval contained containing that point contained in the set we're going to try reformulate the definition of open sets so we're going to rewrite the definition of open sets which was simply an open set is union of open intervals from the we're going to reformulate it into something which makes use of this fact which we just observed the fact is given any point inside an open set we can find an open interval containing that point completely contained in that set we all noticed it in two ways one this is true for open sets two this is true only for open sets so this can be used to characterize open set too to check whether a set is open or not. This is how I am going to rewrite the definition. A set K is a point and contained in the set we are considering. So, uh, Is it uh, back up alive? Are you able to hear me? I believe some of the par some parts of the session were lost in buffering, so I will quickly repeat it. Is the audio and the video in sync? I'm sorry for the trouble. This is uh, something that we can't do anything about. It's the problem with the service provider uh, and also due to the recent internet usage is the audio and the video in sync so we are going to reformulate the definition of open sets i hope uh, i'll quickly run through it we just notice that given any point inside an open set we can find an open union of open intervals so we are going to use this observation we made to reformulate the definition of open sets bring in a new way to test whether a given set is open or not and that's nothing but a set k is open in r if given any point x belongs to k not that i am bringing in more clarity here i'm bringing in more clarity here Is it buffering? Can you? Hi, just confirming, is it buffering for you? Is the uh, video output proper?
so uh, continuing can you please leave a response if it's uh, visible to you normally so continuing given any point inside an open set I have translated it in, translated it here into this part and instead of saying just given any point I've said take I've given a symbol for it to k we are claiming there is an open interval containing that point there is an open interval controls is again another set but this particular set is going to be of a special type and it is given for a point x we need to define an open ball one is a point x which we will call sender and we will need another positive number a real number which is positive hi is it uh, buffering Here actually this is so uh, much of a trouble. Is it hey, is it uh, alive the session? Is the session alive? Hi, is the session alive? Are you able to see what's hi? Is the session alive? Are you able to see what's happening on the screen? If here we are, we have missed a lot in between this. I'm sorry, uh, I am unable. I think the video and the uh, lectures are totally out of sync. So please uh, forgive me if I do not respond to you on the chat. If there is a buffering, please mention it then so that I can try to fix it. Uh, anyway, let me quickly recollect this. Now, we have rewritten the definition of an open set using the property we observed that for open sets and open sets alone, given any point x belongs to that set, there is an open interval containing x contained in k. So, using that, we didn't just rewrite it based on that. We also we also brought in some mathematical notations so that it's more precise it's less ambiguous given any point inside an open set we have 
instead of that we gave x for given any x belongs to k and there is an open interval containing x contained in k we avoided some less mathematical terms like completely contained to bring in more clarity now I'm going to define open balls, a special type of open intervals. The aim in defining open balls is going back. If you look at this particular definition, if you look at this particular definition, notice here we have there is an open interval containing x. There's a bit of it'll be good if we can make this more clear, right? So our aim in defining open balls is to simplify this part of the definition. Let's get on to it. Let's consider a special type of open intervals. Open balls are nothing but a special type of open intervals where it is a ball it is denoted by b of x semicolon r and i'll read it as ball centered at x x is called the center and r is called the radius so it's a ball centered at x with radius r it's a special type of open intervals given by b of x r or ball centered at x with radius r as open interval x minus r comma x plus r now we are assuring that r is greater than zero hence x minus r will be less than x plus r and r is a real number so you can use a operation minus on between x and r so this is called an open ball this is a special type of open interval and let's make some interesting observations about this particular open ball before that let's quickly see an example ball centered at 3 with radius 1 will be nothing but 3 minus 1 comma 3 plus 1 which 3 minus 1 is 2 3 plus 1 is 4 hence it's an open interval 2 comma 4 so this open interval this is a ball centered at 3 with radius 1 now uh, for exercise can you quickly try to find ball centered at say 4 with radius 6 what will this be ball centered at 4 with radius 6 leave your comments in the chat uh, Vivek will help you refine your answer if there are anything to correct so give it a thought and leave it leave your answer in chat now one thing to notice our sender is a real number a given point x and our radius is again a real number it's a positive number and r belongs to r so this is a valid claim that ball centered at x is centered at 4 with radius 6 exists and you would have by now figured out that this is nothing but the interval minus 2 comma 10. Now, uh, I'm not going to dig, dig into detail though. This particular sender x is contained in ball centered at x with radius r. So, no matter what we choose, if you see here, ball centered at 3 with radius 1 is open interval 2, 4, and turns out 3 belongs to 2, 4. Similarly, if you consider the ball we were considering, ball centered at uh, yeah, any other ball, so it's centered at 2 with radius 0 
we know that this is nothing but 1.5 comma 2.5 and definitely the sender 2 belongs to this ball so no matter what x we choose with radius greater than 0 x belongs to ball sender at x radius r so let me give you a quick puzzle you can give leave your thoughts in the comment are open balls open sets it's not a very tough question so i'm not going to spend much time leave your thoughts in the comments Arai or Vivek will get back to you. Now, we are going to reformulate the definition of open sets in light of the definition we just took. Note that our interest is in this point here. No matter what x we choose, x belongs to ball centered at x with radius r, point 0.1. Second point is this open ball which we defined right now is nothing but an open interval. Hence, we are going to try reformulate the definition of open sets we wrote in light of this open balls. Now, our present definition is a set K is open in R if given any point X belongs to K. There is an open interval containing x contained in k. Now, our attempt will be to get rid of this little less mathematical part of saying there is an open interval containing x. So, we are going to replace that with a ball centered at x with radius r. But then, how will we assure that this is contained in k? We'll have to control the radius of the ball to do that. By reformulating, we are going to get rid of this containing, contained, too many words there which are similar and confusing. Let's get on to it. Here's what I'm going to do. A set K is open in R. If given any point X belongs to K, till then I'm going to retain it as it is. Now, I'm going to choose the open interval which is required to be the ball we are considering. And I'm simply going to say ball centered at x with radius r, which assures that this ball is an open interval, first of all, and it contains x. So these two condition, an open interval containing x, is simply said as ball centered at x with radius r. And to assure that it is contained in K, we'll have to play on the radius of the ball. There is an, we'll have to, to assure that we will say that if there is at least one R greater than zero, there is at least one positive radius such that the ball we are considering is contained in K, then we would call it an open set. Now, this again looks a lot mixed up. Once we start doing some examples, it will be clear to you. Why are we putting that condition on radius r? Before that, let's do something else. We already have introduced a lot of mathematical notations in here so that it's easier. The notation is more precise. We are going to do it further by introducing some more mathematical notations like a set k is open in r if given any point x belongs to k there is an r greater than zero such that so this entire thing we are going to further simplify it for example we are going to use we know that given any point x can be written as with the mathematical magical letter for all x belongs to k there is an r greater than 0. There is an can be rewritten as there exists r greater than 0. Contained in, we have a beautiful mathematical symbol to do that. 
here if you notice if you notice open ball is a set and k is a set so we can simply use the symbol subset relation to show this let's see how to do it a set k is open in r if given any point x belongs to k for all x belongs to k there is an r greater than 0 there exists r greater than 0 such that ball of xr is subset of k notice how writing in mathematics avoiding as many english words as possible makes it more clear and precise so what we did is we have traveled a long way we have traveled a long way from this definition which we started with sets which are union of open intervals is called an open set from there we refined it to this and at present we have written it down in the shortest form possible more precise and neat than others so a set k is open in r if for all x belongs to k there exists an r greater than zero such that ball of ball centered at x with radius r is subset of k now i am go, uh, can i borrow another 10 minutes so that I'll wind up with the definition of open sets itself. We'll see some examples before we leave. Uh, let's dig into the definition of open sets. And let's see what is the purpose of this R here, the radius R here. For 3 belongs to open interval 2, 4, what could be a possible R? Let's take the R to be 2. If R is equal to 2, what happens? Ball centered at 3 with radius, say, radius we chose as 2 is equal to 1, open interval 1, comma. And we know that clearly this doesn't is not contained in the set we are considering that is open interval 2, comma 4. Hence, R is equal to 2 will not work. But notice that our definition is very specific about it. Our definition says there exists, we just need one, at least one positive number. R is equal to 2 doesn't work, doesn't mean that no other numbers work. Let's try a smaller number. Let's try R is equal to 1. Or oh, in that case, ball centered at 3 with radius 1 is equal to 2, 3 minus 1, 2, comma 3 plus 1, 4. And this is clearly a subset of interval 2, comma 4, the set we are considering. Hence, turns out we can find 1 r is equal to 1 such that an open ball centered at 3 with that radius is contained in the set we are considering. Now, 2.5 is another number which is there in the set. So let's try finding, let's try finding the uh, radius r. I'm not going to give the answer because it's a bit easy. So Try it out and leave your comments in the chat so that Vivek will engage with you and tell you whether that R works. Now, question is, can we find only one R? Will we be able to find only one R such that this is true? Answer is no, you can find infinitely many R. If there is one R such that open ball centered at x with that radius is contained in k that we can find infinitely many such as how we found that for 3 belongs to open interval 2 comma 4 
the R was equal to R is equal to 1 works that is ball centered at 3 with radius 1 was a subset of of level 2 comma 4. You will easily notice that R is equal to 0 0.3 works, R is equal to 0 0.1 works or in fact any R less than 1, any positive R less than 1 will work for the point 3 belongs to open interval 2 comma 4. So this particular R is not, need not be unique. We may have we have, if, the, if it works for one R, it works for infinitely many radiuses. Now, it's not just the good guys. Let's look at some bigger guys like open interval 2 comma plus infinity. That's a set of all numbers to the right of 2. 3 belongs to this particular set, no issues. What could be a possible R? Easily you can see that R is equal to 1, then ball centered at 3 with radius 1 is equal to open interval 2 comma 4, which is clearly contained in the interval we are considering 2 comma plus infinity. So, given 3, we can find an R such that the ball centered at 3 with radius 1 is contained in 2 comma infinity. Similarly, uh, let's take, uh, we can also take say uh, 10,000 belongs to 2 comma infinity. And you would notice that no matter how big the number is, 500 works as an R for this. That is ball centered at 10,000 with radius 500 will contain, will be contained in 2 comma infinity. Now, I hope it is clear to you. Anyway, uh, I, there's, there's a small problem with the streaming. There is the, a lag between streaming and the live class. So uh, in case that you have any comments or any answers that you want to share, please share it in the comments. Vivek is there. I'm also watching the live comments now. So I can get back to you when needed. Now, is Singleton 3 open enough? The set given by the number 3 alone. Can it be open in R? Now, 3 belongs to singleton 3. And we know that any open interval or any ball centered at 3 with any radius greater than 0 will contain at least one point, not at least one point, many points very close to 3 to the left and to its right, but they are not contained in singleton 3. Hence, this will not work. This particular singleton 3 is not we won't for single for singleton three for the point three in that set we won't be able to find an r such that open ball is contained in k now similarly can you find such an r for three belongs to set one two three four answer is no i leave it to you to justify that Clarify that because it's again similar to the problem of 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Considering any open interval or an open ball around 3, if it's of the radius less than 1 or any radius, what happens is these points are not there in the set we are considering. Hence, these, this interval will not be contained in the set we are considering and hence, we won't be able to find an R such that 
or 3 belongs to this. A ball centered at x with radius r is a subset of the set we are considering. So with this small knot, I am going to quickly wind up the session to conclude the observations. We defined open intervals in R as a set, X, set such which contains the point real number six such that A is less than X is less than B. We defined open balls which were a special type of interval and then we defined open sets which are union of open intervals in R and we observed that for any open ball the point x belongs to that open ball centered at x with radius r. Now we also notice that we also redefined, refined our definition of open sets from union of open intervals to a set k is open in R if for all x belongs to k there exists r greater than 0 such that ball centered at x with radius r is a subset of k. We observed that open intervals and hence open balls are open sets. Not all subsets. We also observed that not all subsets of r are open sets. For example, we notice that how singleton 3 is not an open set. How 1, 2, 3, 4 is not an open set. In fact, given any singleton set in R, they will not be open in R. So, with these observations, I am going to wind up for now. And what's going to be the next idea? We, are going, we define these concepts in R. And what we are going to do next is, from what we observed in R, we are going to rewrite it or generalize it into metric spaces. So, that will be our aim for the next session. How do we generalize an idea that we already know into, into general, uh, gen, general metric spaces from R? Now, here's an outline of the next session. Uh, we will tell you when we will be hosting the session soon because there is a small, but due to this internet issues, the sessions are not smooth. And I believe the flow of ideas is being hindered because of that. So we will keep you posted on when that ne next session will be. Or uh, we will see which is the best way to communicate this to you. Uh, so for any metric space, we are going to observe the idea of open balls. And we are going to try generalize it into a general setup for metric space. Right now we defined it for R, we're going to do it for open balls. Similarly, open sets, we're going to define it to any metric space M. From that, we will look into a few examples. Uh, how does the definitions we just generalized into R agree with whatever we observed in this particular session? And then we will look at how does open set look like in R with discrete metric. We talked about it in the previous session about metric spaces. Open balls in R2 and R3 cube R will be, we'll also look at them and you will find something interesting about open balls in R2 and R3. Now, I am sorry for the buffering issues. It's unavoidable. It's not in our control. It's the same internet with which I buffered, did the first session. But unfortunately, due to this corona lockdown, things are much harder. You can find us on Telegram for updates. And uh, these are our projects. On Facebook, we have a website where content is posted. Uh, almost all of these contents are posted better. And uh, you can use the code CC10 to join an Academy Plus to get a 10% discount there. Christy Vergas, one of our friends who here in the channel, has is active on an academy. You can join him, uh, join his lectures on general aptitude. So you can also follow the YouTube channels here. Uh, this channel, hit the subscribe button now. Anyway, I'm sorry about the buffering issues again. We'll keep you posted on when the next session will be. We'll try to sort out the buffering issues and we'll get back to you soon. 
if you have any doubts, get in touch with, in touch with us through the Telegram group. We are always online. We are happy to help. But a small note. We are not going to give you the best quick answer straight away. We will be giving you hints towards finding the answer. So, if you have a question, we, we will try to interact with you. We will try to see how much you know. We will try to see how to make you think through and find the answer. So, if you have a question, feel free to point it out and we will address it for you. Anyway, thank you again. We will end the stream right now. Please do like the video if you found it useful.